Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Boucher, and in this little lesson we're going to learn how to measure the mass of an object. And to do so, we're going to review the tool we need to measure that mass. My goal is to measure the mass of this block. I want to know how much stuff there is here. And to do so, I'm going to use a tool called a triple beam balance. This is my triple beam balance. It's called a triple beam because there are three beams here in which these riders can slide on. But don't let the, the appearance fool you. It's really just a fancy teeter-totter. There's a pivot point right here. We put the object we want to measure over here on the pan, which causes the teeter-totter to move. And then by sliding these sliders, we try to balance it out. And that's why we call it a balance. We know it's balanced by looking over here at the zero point. And before you even start to use your triple beam balance, you want to make sure all the sliders are at zero, there's nothing on your pan, and that this little pointer is pointing at the zero. Looks like we're all set to go. If my balance wasn't already balanced, and my pointer pointing to zero, I would use this little knob at the end and make little turns until it adjusted it so that this was on the zero. I'm already on the zero, so I can start right away. Okay, so now that my balance is balanced, I'm going to take the object that I want to know the mass, and I'm going to stick it on the pan. When I do so, we notice that the pointer now is on the up position. Now I need to adjust the sliders to balance this back to zero. You'll notice it's called the triple beam balance because there are three beams here, and we have to look at the beams, and we notice that the first one goes from 0 to 10 grams. The middle one goes from 0 to 500 grams. And the one in the back goes from 0 to 100 grams. We always start with the biggest slider, so it's the one in the middle. I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to very carefully move the slider over to 100 and it locks into position. And notice that the pointer didn't move. So what I know is that the block has a mass greater than 100. I'm going to slide it over to 200 and see what happens. Ooh, did you notice that it went down? So now I know that the block has a mass that is less than 200. So I'm going to bring it back to 100. 200 is just too much. So now I'm going to go to the next tens units, and I'm going to jump up to 10. 20. 30. 40. Ooh, I have some movement. So now I know that 140 grams is just too much. So I'm going to back it off to the 30. 130 grams is not enough, but 140 grams is too much. So now I'm going to move to the slider in the front. And the slider in the front, well, it doesn't lock into position. It can slide pretty easily. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to slide it along as gently as I can. And I start to get some movement. And once it moves, I might want to let it move a little bit and then settle. And I notice that my line is still above the zero, so I need to go a little bit more. Let it settle. And that looks pretty darn close. So now my balance is balanced. And now I can read the mass from the balance, and I can determine what the mass of the block is. We can clearly see that the sliders are at the 100, 30, and, well, greater than 6 but less than 7 grams. So right now we're at 136 grams. Let's take a closer look. If we look really closely, we'll notice that there are 10 divisions between the 6 and the 7. And our little pointer on our slider is pointing to the 7th division. So that means it's reading at 6.7 grams. So our final answer is 136.7 grams. Your teacher might have you round that to 137 grams. Just make sure you know what they want. Well, that's how you measure the mass of an object, but we haven't talked about perhaps the most important thing. Don't forget your units. 137 
is not the answer. 137 grams is the answer. Thanks for watching.